as it is very clear from the name that multiple inheritance means a class will inherit more than one class like there are two classes a and b a class has certain functions and attributes there's an independent class b there's no relation between these two classes b class doesn't inherit the a class right now when the c class will inherit these two classes the object of c class can access the functions and attributes of a class as well as the functions and attributes of b class and it is not essential that the c class can inherit only two classes in multiple inheritance, a class can inherit any number of classes, right? But there is a problem called diamond problem in multiple inheritance. For example, this B class inherits A class. So the class B has a copy of all the functional attributes of class A. This class C also inherits A. So a copy of functions and attributes of class A are assigned to the class C also. Now this D class is doing multiple inheritance. It is inheriting both classes, B and C. So now D has two copies of the functions and attributes of class A. Which of those two copies the object of D class will execute? This is your first program, multiple inheritance, right? Now what I'm doing here is a class rect, which has one default constructor and a function. There's another class triangle, which has a default constructor and a function in TRG area. Now this is a class average, which inherits both the classes, rect and triangle. So obviously what will happen that the object of this average class can access the functions and attributes of this rect class, this functions and attributes of this triangle class, and obviously it can access the attributes and functions of its own class. So through the object of average class, you can compute area of rectangle, area of triangle, as well as the average of three values. Here I'm using the default values. Okay, now let's see how. This is the object R of average class, right? How many arguments are here? Nothing. So obviously the pattern compiler will look for a default constructor in the average class. I hope that you know the concept about default constructor and parameterized constructor. If you haven't seen my earlier lecture, which was based on classes and default and parameterized constructor, I am providing you the link in the description box about the whole playlist of the videos. Then it will become very easy for you to understand the concept of this lecture, right? So the compiler will jump to the default constructor of the average class. This is the default constructor. Here we are asking to invoke the default constructor of red class so the control will come to the default constructor of the red class and here these default values 8 and 5 will be assigned to the length and breadth attributes and these length and breadth are the instance attributes of the object r right after executing the default constructor of the red class control will come over here in the default constructor of the average class here you are asking to invoke the default constructor of triangle class control will jump to the default constructor of the triangle class here these are certain default values. It can be anything, right? So 17 and 13 are assigned to the base and height attribute of the R object, right? After that, the control will jump to the default constructor of the average class here on this line. And these default values will be assigned to the P, Q and R attributes. These values can be anything, right? After assigning the default values to length and breadth attributes, after assigning the default values to base and height attributes, and after assigning the default values to these P, Q and R attributes of the R object, control will come back to the main function. Here you are displaying the line area of rectangle is and you are invoking the rect area function through the R object. Obviously, the R being the object of average class, which is inheriting the rect and triangle class. So this R object has the right to access the rect area function of the rectangle class. Here the control will jump and the multiplication of length and breadth, that is 8 into 5, will be computed and returned here. So you get 40 value displayed here. Area of triangle is will be displayed on the screen. And you are invoking the TRG area of the triangle class. Cursor will come over here. Half into base into height. That is half into 17 into 13. Whatever the result is will be returned and displayed over here. Then after the AVG value method is invoked to compute the average of three values P plus Q plus R divided by 3. And the result will be returned and displayed here. So let us copy this multiple inheritance program and paste it in the spider id i am running it see area of rectangle is 40 area of triangle is 110 this 40 has come because of this 8 into 5 110.5 has come half into 17 into 13 and average of three values because of these values 3 11 plus 9 plus 5 divided by 3 see this result of average is very precise to many precision values we can make it appear to two place of decimals by writing percentage 0.2f this is a format specifier and here you have to remove this comma 
and add a percentage here. So after removing the comma and after adding this percentage symbol, the statement is ready to display the result to two places of decimals. 